So these are my ethic notes. When a patient doesn't want his family to know about his disease, work to find the be next best surrogate decision maker in case of him losing capacity. So this is the hierarchy of decision maker from highest authority to lowest. The first on the list is patient designated proxy, for example, durable power of attorney. Then comes the court appointed guardian and then comes the next of kin, starting with spouse, partner, adult children, parents, adult siblings, other adult relatives and unrelated friends at the and uh, when patient is unable to make decision regarding medical care and has not designated a surrogate decision maker decision making falls to the next of kin default surrogate patients who wish not to inform family members or of protected health information should designate an alternate surrogate decision maker okay standardize uh, to avoid mistakes practice closed loop techniques to prevent error over phones right so um yep that dnr is only for cardiopulmonary arrest okay so should i be going over these okay i'll quickly read them uh use of incorrect uh units for example pounds instead of kilogram and calculating weight-based medications does uh, doses can result in fatal errors system uh, standardization is highly effective strategy to prevent errors because it simplifies tasks complexity and reduces human error needed for correct dosing communication breakdowns a leading cause of medical error are more likely to occur with abbreviation verbal orders or third-party messages closed loop Communications increase communication accuracy and reduces medical error risk. So standardize to avoid mistakes, practice closed loop techniques to prevent error over phone. A DNR order applies only to cardiopulmonary arrest. Patients with a DNR order should continue to receive treatment consistent with the current standards of the care for their present thing condition for example intravenous thrombolysis for stroke dnr is only for cardiopulmonary arrest loss of the ability to independently feed is a sign of terminal stage dementia management includes the hand feeding of small portion of food and water for the patient's comfort and pleasure instead of nutritional or caloric goal hand feeding should be continued as long as the patient accepts the food so hand feeding should be done in patients who can accept it Okay. Due to conflict of interest between researchers and physicians, external oversight by third party should happen to promote study by validity. Rapid response team activated when... Um, so I'll only read these uh, if I feel like it's needed. Otherwise, this, is, this should suffice. Uh, you can obviously pause the video and read those if you need to. So rapid response, uh, due to conflict of interest, went over that. Rapid response team activated when early clinical signs and symptoms are seen to reduce mortality rates. So this is talking about um, multidisciplinary rapid response teams, provide clinical assessment and early intervention for hospitalized patients at high risk for clinical deterioration. Such teams can support primary care teams and reduce in-hospital mortality rates. Okay. Uh, you need to know the uh, biases. So uh, first we'll do this. Framing bias is when doctor relies on the charts and previous notes to diagnose instead of doing the workup to properly conclude. Availability and bias is uh, doctor is ordering head CT a lot, uh, a lot more and then other dogs because he recently missed intracranial bleed on someone with chronic migraine in a young patient so now he orders it in every patient with chronic migraine so this is called the availability bias okay so there are four types of biases that they talk about uh, when speaking of common cognitive errors in medicine anchoring bias uh, it's defined as fixating on initial impression to make a diagnosis related to confirmation bias and premature closure for example Burning throat pain diagnosed at as his reflux despite weight loss. Correct diagnosis is lung malignancy. Okay. Uh, 
so availability bias um, is defined as allowing recently seen or memorable high stakes cases to sway diagnosis for example dyspnea diagnosed as influenza during peak influenza season uh, correct diagnosis pulmonary embolism confirmation bias is defined as emphasizing evidence that supports presumed diagnosis and overlooking information that supports other diagnosis it's related to anchoring bias right um, for example burning throat pain after eating spicy food diagnosed as as a reflux despite weight loss correct diagnosis malignancy and then there is framing bias right uh, allowing diagnostic approach to be influenced by context and presentation of information for example, abdominal pain diagnosed as opioid withdrawal and patient diagnosed as drug seeking. Correct diagnosis is bowel obstruction. When prescribing to elderly, consider average time to therapeutic benefit as extrapolated from research studies. Okay, uh, fall risk in an elderly assesses uh, assesses, uh, assesses with. Uh, get up and go test uh, treatment here is supervised exercise training um, medication prescribing in elderly patients uh, major consideration is increased susceptibility to ADEs that's adverse drug uh, effects events uh, increased polypharmacy risk due to multiple chronic conditions susceptibility to farm harm and from over treatment and under treatment principles of prescribing is limit the number of prescribers uh, always you know if there are multiple doctors the doctors can tell them to or they can call up their primary care physicians and tell them to prescribe the medication from their end um, and that way uh, one doctor the PCP will be in charge of all the well, prescription uh, review criteria for uh, geriatric population, for example, beers or start that screening tool to alert to right treatment. Consider time to benefit for drug, tailor regimen to the patient's goals and life expectancy. Frequent reassess, frequently reassesses uh, appropriateness of medication. Okay, fall risk should be regularly assessed in older patients, chronic disease, and muscle weaknesses. For example, difficulty raising from chair are associated with increased fall risk. Supervised exercise training is recommended for all older patients with high fall risk and should include strength, cardiovascular, and uh, balance components. Just because patient is accepted in a study doesn't mean they will get uh, be getting superior treatment. Give them reality check that they could be getting treatment that is not inactive or that is not active or placebo uh, or that is act inactive or a placebo right hospice is intended to make people die sooner <laughs> uh, sorry hospice is not intended to make people die sooner but helps people die naturally in their own time okay Remember, life expectancy less than six months is a requirement for hospice care. Okay. Uh, root care analysis or fishbone. It is a diagram used to organize categories and causes of errors that undermine system performance. Main component is to include the problem being analyzed, main categories influencing the problem, and the specific sub caused pertaining to each category okay don't confuse it with lean or identify extra extraneous uh, steps in a process that decreases efficiency failure mode and effects analysis is performed to see any potential causes for errors and failures in a system so that probably won't make sense right now let's go through the chart so common tool used in error analysis there's a root cause analysis also known as the fish bone model this is the fish bone diagram it's um, retrospective identifies all underlying errors uh, underlying reasons uh, systems and personnel related that an error occurred right so 
Um, category two is teamwork. They're working towards this to see why there's long patient wait times. So they came from Um, so by, from the time they come and um, why there's long wait time, this is how they calculated it. First, they looked at the teamwork. Then they looked at something else. Then they looked at uh, the scheduling uh, and what's going on. And eventually, they reach the cause. Okay. So let's read that again. It is a diagram used to organize categories and causes of errors that undermine systemic uh, system performance. Main component is to include the problem being analyzed. Main categories influencing the problem. So these would be the categories, category one, category two, that leads to this problem. And the specific sub cause pertaining to each category. So specific cause would be double booking a patient. Failure modes and effects analysis. This is prospective. Identifies the likelihood of potential sources of system failures before error occurs. So they just run drills and see what can go wrong and then they iron it out. Common cause analysis. This is retrospective again. Uh, identifies most common themes and trends present among multiple errors. Morbidity and mortality conference. So this is retrospective now. Um, identify system level improvement to address an error through confidential interdisciplinary standardized group decision. Okay. So failure mode and effect analysis is performed to see. Oh, right. Uh, is performed to see potential causes and errors and failure in a system. Don't confuse it with lean. Uh, it's talking about root cause analysis. Lean is, is to identify extraneous steps in a process that decreases efficiency. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this is lean. Identification and removal of insufficiency and waste in a workflow. Okay, um, there is no error here. Here, there is an error, right? So when we're doing error analysis, you're not talking, uh, lean is not an option. So don't pick that. Um, when speaking of error, it's root cause analysis. But here, we're just trying to improve the process. So that's where lean comes in. Uh, we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, failed communication can lead to errors in large hospitals with high load patients. So it's failed communications. Okay, so like, Diagnostic errors commonly result from cognitive biases, unconscious mental heuristics, which is shortcuts, distorting clinical judgment, cognitive bias, and associated diagnostic errors can reduce can be reduced by applying uh, metacognition, for example, understanding and reflecting on one's own thought patterns and biases. Diagnostic errors commonly result from cognitive bias. Okay. Um, according to Joint Commission's root analysis, uh, cause analysis, failures in communication and teamwork are the lead cause of sentinel events. These are serious errors causing patient death or arm, uh, harm. Uh, safety promoting systems anticipate and prevent human error in high risk settings through redundancies, sufficient staffing, and teamwork. Okay. Uh, falls in older adults uh, again. Uh, prevent inpatient falls by keeping their bed in direct line of the nurse. Have their vision checked since their proprioception declines are age increase as inch increases leads to over reliance on visual input. Right, so if they're falling a lot, get their vision checked because as they grow older, they rely on vision. Okay, falls in healthcare uh, settings are serious patient concerns. Risk is increased in patients with incontinence and cognitive uh, impairment because they got to get up to pee and then it's night, nobody's around, so they hurt themselves. Uh, 
patients who are agitated or delirious should be supervised closely, for example, by dedicated sitter or nurse and should be roomed in direct line of the site to supervising staff. Uh, false or no, overview, leading cause of injury and morbidity risk are history of fall, sensory or cognitive disturbance, uh, chronic disease, medications, uh, patient prevention, screening, uh, medication and home safety review. Uh, that's an important one. Uh, correction of uh, vitamin D deficiency and supervised exercise program. This is also important. Inpatient prevention, assess fall risk. Uh, optimize environment, perform frequent checks on high-risk patients, avoid restraints, and over-reliance on fall alert systems. Okay, use bright flyers to ensure adherence to precautionary standards since it reduces reliance on memory. This is talking about uh, visual aid uh, to promote safe actions by health care workers. Right? Uh, adherence to isolating precautions can be Increased through strategically placed visual aids. Okay. Um, the patient can be eligible for hospice if she discontinues current curative therapy. However, she can continue radiotherapy for painful spinal metastasis. This would be considered palliative. Right. So the question was talking about how this patient was on uh, multiple therapies and one of them was radiotherapy. And radiotherapy for painful spinal metastasis. And hospice care, in principle, is there to reduce the pain, not to prolong the life, right? Um, so the radiotherapy was for painful spinal metastasis, right? Um, it wasn't for in any way uh, to treat what anything else was happening so the hospice model of care is designed to optimize comfort and quality of life for patient with terminal illness patient enrolling in hospice service may continue treatments that are intended for relief of systems uh, symptoms for example palliative radiotherapy but not those that are curative or intended to prolong life okay so patient selection terminal illness uh, agreement to forego curative management goals are optimized palliative care Avoid unwanted treatment and hospitalization. Reduce caregiver burden. Uh, typical services, care provided in patient's home or in patient hospice facility. Periodic home visits by experienced personnel. Medical medication titration, durable medical treatment uh, equipment. This uh, is physical therapy and spiritual, psychosocial, and grief counseling. Okay. So call up the insurance company to request medical director review if the insurance doesn't cover your prescription. Okay. Um, there is uh, now like a, if you do it and the insurance doesn't do it, they can call, actually ask you to review it. And it's like a whole, it's basically everything's on computer now. So you just got to go to their website and fill in their form. You know, I believe that's how it's done now, but some insurance might still need you to call them up. Uh, lean. So lean is scheduling postpartum visit with child wellness visit at the same time, identifying and reducing waste within a process so as to reduce missed appointments in new mothers. Right. So that was a good question. Uh, it was where they did a survey on why uh, after postpartum uh, ladies, they used to miss their appointments, um, but they would make the child wellness appointments. Uh, they would always come during those times. So they were asking what's going on and they were wondering, and then they were asking you what can improve this. So you could uh, book the mother and the child wellness uh follow up all of those things add together so that they can come and get everything done at one go uh, so it would be easier for them okay so that's what lean was then there's model of improvement incremental cycles of planning plotting piloting uh, assessing and refining an intervention to achieve a specific goal pdsa cycle 
for example, testing a new check-in procedure with weekly uh, tabulation of patient satisfaction surveys, lean uh, identification and removal of insufficiency, efficiency, and work in a workflow, for example, streamlining scheduling to reduce access waiting time. Six sigma, near elimination of defect through statistically driven process improvement. For example, controlling annual incidence of wrong site in surgery to less than 0.0001% through enhanced safety measures. Okay, and change management. Okay, so quality improvement. I'm trying to remember Six Sigma. Near elimination of defects through statistically driven process improvements. Okay. So Six Sigma is for safety. Uh, change management. Engaging personnel, personnel to adopt uh, innovation and implement organizational changes. For exa uh, example, identifying the frontline early adapters to adopters to lead implementations of a new EHR electronic health record system. Okay. When someone is trying to lose weight and is motivated but can't because of lack of time, use SMART. SMART is specific, focused, and precise, specific exercise type, measurable, easily quantified, for example, minute per day. Uh, Exercise attainable, adjusted to resource constraints like time or money, realistic, for example, 15 minute of walking three days a week after being sedentary, right? Uh, relevant, logically oriented to patient's objective. For example, exercise facilitates weight loss. Time bound, results reassessed after a defined interval for example, one month. So patients who encounter difficulties during initial attempts at lifestyle modification and this, 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 it's that same thing. There are more reasons why weight loss might not work. Let's start by keeping a diary on your food and weight, weight and food intake. Response to a women, uh, women frustrated due to not being able to lose weight. Okay. Um, behavioral intervention for weight loss, stimulus control, physical activity, self-monitoring and accountability and follow-up. Okay, so stimulus control, maintain stock of easy to prepare healthy foods, store healthy foods in prominent location, limit stocks of less healthy foods, physical exam activity, moderate to intense aerobic exercise, uh, resistance training, lifestyle activity, for example, take stairs, reduce sitting time, self-monitoring, regular uh, documentation of weight, food intake, and exercise, accountability follow-up, provider visits, uh, phone calls, internet contacts, group participation, and sessions. Okay, group participation sessions. All right. Uh, airborne precautions. Isolate to prevent prolonged suspension in air uh, with V. Uh, this is for aerosol, airborne. Um, so, tuberculosis, uh, varicella, or so zoyster, rubella, uh, N95 respirator for powered or powered air purifying respirator, negative pressure isolation room with high efficiency particulate air filter as needed if contact with body fluid is anticipated. Gl clean gloves disposable gown and goggles or face shield. It's needed for airborne precautions. Okay. Focus on the most severely ill patients on the beginning of at the beginning of the handoff. Encourage questions throughout the handoff to prevent any mess ups and screw ups. Right. So how do you reduce errors in patient handoffs? Discuss highest equity uh, that sickest patients first. Provide extra details on critical Patients avoid uh, okay. Just to see something. So avoid information overload. So optimize communication. Follow template. For example, checklist. Include oral and written communication. Encourage questions throughout the discussion, not only at the end of it. Use read back. 
selectively, for example, for to-do items. Optimize actions, include follow-up items uh, like to-do list, provide anticipatory guidance, either, for example, if or then format. P4P or pay for performance incentives uh, should be based on the patient population served as some lower income population area might not be able to afford the follow-up care. Right, okay. Improving hand hygiene uh, compliance. So let's go into that. Uh, health equity is a component of healthcare quality care. Pay for performance, which links physician financial incentives to evidence-based performance measures, should consider patient demographic factors as well, patient income level, when determining incentive payments to avoid increasing disparities and lowering overall quality of care. Improving uh, hand hygiene compliance in healthcare system settings. Reasons for non-compliance would be ineffective placement of sinks and dispensers, lack of accountability, lack of safety culture, forgetfulness, or lack of time. For example, solutions are so for infect, ineffective placement of sink and dispenser, place sinks, dispensers uh, outside each patient's room, lack of accountability, hand build hand hygiene into proper evaluations, lack of safety culture, create safety say and teams, provide real-time feedback on compliance forgetfulness or lack of time visual cues for example signs red arrows and near visual cues for example signs red arrows near doorways okay when voluntarily stopping of eating and drinking so if someone doesn't want to eat and they stop you don't force feed them right so when a patient requires VSED, that's voluntary some cessation. What was it? I don't remember the full form for this, but basically they don't want to eat it. So um, first, you confirm that the patient is cognitively intact and that the request for uh, voluntary stopping of uh, their diet is voluntary and not influenced by mental illness, counsel the patient and family members regarding possible consequences, including severe thirst and associated discomfort. Discuss alternatives to VSED, like continuing fluids only, decreasing rather than eliminating oral intake, right? Or discuss and clearly record the patient's preference for managing discomfort. For example, small sips of fluid, oral swabbing, ice chips, because delirium and cognitive impairment may occur. For elderly patients who live independently and prefer to live at home, our homebound needs medical management and physical therapy. Arrange home health care system service. Okay, so uh, water break here. Uh, overview health service provided by skilled uh, home health care workers nursing PTOT SW SW is social worker um, in the home covered by Medicare if patient is homebound and has skills skilled health needs uses medically stable for dis discharge but homebound and requiring intermittent monitoring high risk of adverse events for example for risk complex medication regime um, skilled nursing needs for example wounds physical rehabilitation benefits promote uh, patient mental health at autonomy and independence right um, so this is uh, what the question is about for elderly patients who live independently and prefer to live at home and are homebound, needs medical management and physical therapy, arrange a home health care service for that. Decrease health care uh, or reduce risk of hospital readmission and length of hospitalization for uh, fewer nosocomial infections. Decrease health care spending that is less expensive than 
skilled nursing facility. And these are the benefits. Okay, uh, no escalation of treatment. NEOT orders are predetermined. So when fam don't feel like withdrawing care for the patient, reframe the discussion to see if the fam agrees to no escalation of treatment for our order. So no escalation of treatment, what is that? It's an order or predetermined limits of care that are not to be exceeded regardless of clinical status. When a patient's family member are reluctant to withdraw care, NEOT orders can promote agreement with the care team, minimize futility, and lessen feelings of guilt for hastening the patient's death. Okay, a managed racism by organizing interactive group debriefing sessions to discuss aggregate study results that found the implicit bias. So what is implicit bias? Basically racism. Um, definition. Subconscious stereotype about an attitude towards a specific group, for example, ethnic minority, non-deliberate and unconscious, distinct from intentional discrimination. Uh, effects are influences provider thinking in Communication and behavior affecting differential diagnosis and treatment contributes to health disparities, for example, suboptimal pain management. Management assesses for presence of biases, for example, uses standardized testing tools. Promote individual and group exploration, for example, debriefing of biases and stereotypes. Uh, train providers to recognize and monitor throughout processes, for example, metacognition. Contemplation, or sorry, pre-contemplation. Yeah, so contemplation. Dude doesn't want to go into inpatient treatment for his alcohol treatment, but is okay with outpatient treatment. Asks him, ask him now how he thinks this might help his alcoholism. Okay. Um, so stage of change model. There were uh, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance, and identification. Uh, pre-contemplation stages not ready to change patient does not acknowledge uh, negative consequences so here you're going to do encourage patient to evaluate consequences of uh, current behavior explain and personalize the risk recommending action is premature at this stage Con so you just ask them to think about it uh, contemplation thinking of changing Patient acknowledges consequences, but is ambivalent, like they don't care. So here you're going to encourage evaluation of pros and cons of the behavior change. Promote new and positive behaviors. Uh, preparation. Ready to change. Patient decides to change. So here you're going to encourage small initial steps. Reinforce positive outcome expectations. Okay. Um, Action. Action is where the change happens. So patient makes specific over changes. Uh, well, change happens at contemplation, but you know, uh, where the manifested action ha happens is at action stage. So making changes. Uh, patient makes specific over changes. Help identify appropriate change strategies and enlist social support. Promote self-efficacy for dealing with obstacles. Maintenance changes integrated into patient's life. Focus on relapse prevention. Follow up support. This is what you're going to do. So, if they, you know, get off the wagon, then follow up support, reinforce intrinsic rewards, develop relapse prevention strategies. Like if they started doing, picking up, you know, old habits and drug abuse, then why did it happen? It happened because they were over at friend's place. So, maybe. Don't go over to that friend's place, right? Identification. Behavior is automatic. Changes incorporated into sense of self. Praise changes. Okay, so, yeah. Institutional review boards, IRBs, review research protocols to ensure that participants' uh, rights, for example, autonomy and privacy, are protected and that the research minimizes risks to participants. IRB review is generally required for research that uses protected health information, for example, identifiable individual patient information, even 
when such research is restricted to chart review and no physical contact with patient will be made. So federal regulation for research involving human participants, informed consent, disclosed research procedures, risk and benefits alternatives, clarify difference in research versus clinical processes, for example, randomization and placebo generally required when research revolves PHI, IRB review ensures that uh, research pro ensure that research protocol minimizes risk to participants ensure adequate information informed content consent protection and phi and equitable recruitment is there may be exempted or expedited in specific cases for example minimal risk no phi collected hipaa or privacy rule requires researcher to obtain authorization from patient to use PHI, that is protected health information, uh, separate from informed consent. Okay. Um, okay, almost done. Uh, always focus on cessation. Uh, although congratulated them on their effort of cutting down, don't tell them to keep going and keeping the amount low because that will cause relapse always ask them to stop uh you know congratulate them for their efforts that they were able to cut it down but don't tell them to keep going tell them that the end goal is to stop completely okay because if you just tell them to keep on going uh, at uh, cutting it down at low that will cause relapse so patient is frustrated and discouraged because she i was unable to stop completely but made uh, significant process in cutting down so you haven't reached the goal yet but i believe in your ability to quit completely based on your success in cutting down so far so instead of do that instead of saying you have made significant progress so let's refocus the goal keeping your sig use at the current load levels instead of stopping completely okay don't say that say this be that guy you're not that guy <laughs> Uh, smoking cessation intervention by stage of changes, not ready to quit, ready to quit, struggling to quit, recently quit. So if they're not ready to quit, conduct motivational interviewing for R's, relevance, risk, reward, roadblocks, repeat at every visit, prescribe uh, varinicline uh, to facilitate reduce to quit uh, strategy, uh, twofold higher rate of durable abstinence. Okay. Uh, with uh, very nice clean ready to quit set a firm quit uh, quit date and discard smoking paraphernalia provide behavioral counseling and engage support system prescribe pharmacotherapy for example uh, ver verniclin bupropion or nrt so uh, struggling to quit uh, is reinforce partial achievements, identify triggers, and link them to other distracting activities. Use biofeedback loops, for example, exhaled, uh, steel monitoring, gamification using mobile app. Recently quit, congratulate and or offer uh, continued support, continue pharmacotherapy for 12 weeks, encourage active reflection, anticipated problems how was your life changed right so yeah uh, 12 weeks you continue pharmacotherapy okay so chronic lower back pain abdo pain uh, plus young woman and normal evaluation signs of IPV should be considered uh, explain that Follow-up is important after discharge to people after vignette shows incidents of missed appointments leading to avoidable events. Right, so explain that follow-up is important after discharge. Okay, inducement uh, is caused by excessive compensation to research participants to overlook risks that may have otherwise considered as unacceptable so it's like giving them 
six months of pay for two months of research um, and they only need to show up maybe twice a week you know that's excessive so even though it's dangerous they'll be like it's worth it because of the money so that is called inducement you know something like that take assent or uh, which is consent for minors for research studies you need assent uh, you don't need it but take it because you're a good doctor uh, do Thorough examination to avoid patient asking for tests. Lower back patients. Okay. Do thorough examination to avoid patient asking for tests. So if they're like worried and even though uh, intern or resident went in and they did the test, they're still not convinced. It's because they rushed it. Sit there, you know, go through the whole examination and explain to why you're doing this and everything and that will avoid them asking for more tests um food deserts are areas of desert okay not desserts <laughs> food deserts are areas of low-income communicate communities that have limited access to healthy foods right so it's like they only find fast food restaurants around the block and you know, in that area or whatever and they need to go really far like make a 30 minute trip to get to healthy food options or supermarkets so these areas are called food deserts and yeah so why is this important is because if someone's trying to make some changes in their life and they don't have any access to healthy foods it's bad so then you gotta work with them and see if there are available options in the area uh, you as a doctor will actually do the research and for their next appointment and ask them to look into these and that's the way to go for that one transgender patients experience significant health disparities including communication errors uh, for uh, for example addressed as incorrect name or pronoun so that increases emotional distress and reluctance to seek care such errors can be prevented by human factors engineering strategies incorporating uh, physical changes for example visibility of patient preferred name gender in the chart and simplification which reduce the effort needed for correct action physicians yeah so such errors can be prevented by human factor engineering strategies incorporating physical changes for, for example visibility of patient preferred name gender and the chart so if you know someone can just make a note of that and simplification which reduces the effort needed for correct action right so maybe just uh, we'll figure it out physicians may encourage patients using treatment for which evidence regarding benefits and risk is unclear. In such cases, the physician should schedule frequent follow-ups, visits, and apply patient-centered care to build trust and strengthen the therapeutic alliance. Right. So if they come in with a treatment that is you are not sure of, or it's like, uh, you know, not allopathic, don't tell them to completely that it's rubbish. Um, you don't know that for sure so you just ask them if it's helping you uh, go ahead but I would recommend you know uh, do uh, come back two weeks later or 28 days later you know so frequent follow-ups so we can make sure that you're okay and there is no harm there being done when discussing a patient's use of non-standard uh, therapies that are known to be harmful, the physician should clearly explain the risks to patients. If the patient insists on using such therapies, the physician should schedule close follow-up to strengthen the therapeutic alliance and monitor for toxicity. So yeah, what I just said. Uh, physiological, psychological, so. Right, so psychological. Uh, safety refers to teams members comfort in taking action for example opening openly voicing concerns and asking for help so if a nurse is uh, concerned about her job or her you know 
mental health uh, and like say a hospital uh, put out a protocol for something where you're um, supposed to call the first aid team or like you know some the team that I don't know they made for so, uh, something particular and uh, the nurse doesn't do it and you when you uh, she's asked why then she would be like because uh, last time when I did it uh, the doctor wasn't too happy with me about it so uh, he said that he is much better at taking care of his patients than the protocol or something like that I forget but in this case there's uh, you should be concerned of psychological safety of uh, team members so psychological safety refers to the team members comfort in taking action for safe patient outcomes psychological safety is hindered by a strict hierarchy of fear or of retribution and can be promoted by organizational in initiatives such as change management for example engaging frontline personnel in improving organizational culture all right that's it Good luck.